Hey, I'm Pete Hampton. This is a presentation about extending Kibana with plugins. Um, I'm phoning in from Belfast, Northern Ireland today, and I'm a data engineer at Elastic Security. I build data feeds and pipelines for threat researchers and data scientists. But here are you. You're someone who has a basic understanding of Kibana and Elasticsearch. You're comfortable wrangling TypeScript, and you're also comfortable with Git and a Git hosting service like GitHub. So this lightning talk is going to be um, experiential and anecdotal. It's about a Kibana plugin I developed in 2017 at an investment bank, and I've been maintaining it ever since for them and other companies. Um, and I have quite unique experience developing a plugin and also working at Elastic. So this presentation is about the lessons and resources about developing and maintaining plugins. So extending Kibana. I'm going to do this in four topics, starting a uh, Kibana plugin, testing it, security, and also shipping. Um, these are huge topics. I could probably talk about 90 minutes about each of these topics, but this is just going to be a super quick overview. So starting. To get started, you'll want to download the Kibana repo and run a local Elasticsearch node. This will allow us to uh, peg the node version with the node version that's running with uh, Kibana that you're targeting. And you can also generate a plugin with the scripts, generate plugin script. Um, that will create a project that looks similar like this in the plugins repo, or the plugins directory, sorry. Um, so that it contains um, a common directory, which contains common code that you can share between the public uh, um, user interface and the server backend. And then there's also a, a translations section if you want to translate your plugin. So to get more understanding about how to develop um, Kibana plugins with TypeScript, check out this presentation that happened last month hosted by Jay Miller with special guest Luke Elmers from the Kibana team. So testing your Kibana plugin, you'll notice that um, that it doesn't come with test stubs. Um, I really like Jest, and I find a lot of um, benefits in using that. And it means I can keep the unit tests alongside the uh, business logic. I also like the idea of using NDN tests and using uh, a local Docker Compose network to spin up Elasticsearch, Kibana, and download the plugin to test that way. It's also a good place to test security. So security. I think it's important to kind of keep in mind as you develop a plugin that we're introducing security risk into a user's environment. If you follow the OWASP uh, top 10, you'll realize that uh, A06 in 2001 and A10 2001 are both uh, vulnerabilities that could affect um, your plugin and the user's environment. So using outdated components like old libraries that are vulnerable to attack and also server-side request forgery. I recommend consider that you consider using a dependency updater service like Dependabot to check if you have any outdated dependencies in your plugin. I also recommend a tool like Sneak for static analysis. This can find common CVEs and CWEs. It can also advise on remediation action on your code. So if there's a bug in your code that is likely to uh, surface a bug, um, it will tell you how to fix it. And also, it's free for public repos. So I highly recommend utilizing that. One last point about security. If you're exposing rights, uh, you should research and advise the correct Kibana privileges. And you should also consider how you handle errors so you don't bubble them up to the client. So shipping your plugin. Even though I've been working at Elastic, my team only loosely follows the stack release process. So I don't always get to know uh, when a release is happening, particularly patch releases. So uh, I recommend, um, this is one thing I really struggled with before I worked at Elastic. We had to uh, find out when a new version of the stack was released. So Elastic releases Elasticsearch, Kibana, Logstash, and Friends um, in a uh, semantic versioning scheme. So one uh, thing that I like to do is subscribe to the Elastic Kibana releases RSS feed. And I rec also recommend adopting 
um, a similar uh, nature minor patch uh, semantic version with an iterator at the end. So one thing that I always like to keep an eye out is how much people are downloading the plugin. And this can be achieved by looking at the GitHub API um, and uh, piping it into uh, JQ to see how many people are downloading it. Although it's not always necessarily uh, accurate because um, users often require support for older versions and it's unrealistic to support all the elastic versions. So I usually recommend users fork or clone a repo. And this is not uncommon in air gapped environments where um, the security policy prohibits people from downloading random plugins from the internet. So you'll find that people will clone your project into um, uh, into their environments if they're particularly if if they're on-prem users. So uh, definitely encourage forking and encourage contributions back to your project, but also make sure to share it. Promote your plugin via Elastic's official documentation as full. Uh, let us know what you're developing, and it will also let um, people know that your plugin exists. So, so final thoughts, what I'm focusing on next. Um, I'm also looking at, I'm currently building out a Kibana plugin to augment Kibana um, via browser extensions, not just Kibana extensions. And this allows us to uh, kind of decouple from uh, Kibana so things don't kind of break. And I'm also building an automated release pipeline to test and build a release by um, watching a repo, uh, the Kibana repo in GitHub Actions to download the repo once there's a new version and build a release candidate so I know when and what to release. So some references. Um, so thanks. Thanks for watching.